What's up guys, it's Johnny O with Tutor Tech TV and uh, today I want to talk about overclocking the Intel Core i3-6100. So a little over a year ago now, motherboard manufacturers realized that uh, with tweaks to their BIOS, you could actually overclock Intel non-KCU processors with Z170 chipset and motherboards. Uh, so this of course leads to Intel insisting that uh, they're going to shut down this process, they're going to uh, push BIOS updates that have microcode in them uh, to shut this ability down on the processors as well as Windows 10 updates uh, that would stop Windows 10 from running on a system that had been overclocked in this method. So fast forward to this past Cyber Monday and uh, I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger on moving off my agent AMD platform onto a fresh Skylake build. I decided to take this opportunity to satisfy my own personal curiosity about overclocking the i3 and whether or not it had been shut down by Intel. So I'll go ahead and post links in the description below uh, on how to get the proper BIOS for your motherboard as well as the process of overclocking the non-KCU uh, processors with these BIOS on your motherboard. Right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the system specs and then get into the numbers. Uh, so my AMD system was running an overclocked AMD FX 8320 processor uh, at 4.8 gigahertz running 1.425 volts. Uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory at 1600 megahertz running on a gigabyte 990 FXA ultra durable 3 motherboard uh, The new Intel system is running the core i3 6100 uh, At stock it's 3.7 gigahertz uh, the max overclock I was able to achieve stable was 4.4 gigahertz at 1.4 volts uh, This is running 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM at 2400 megahertz running on a Asus Z170A motherboard so they're both running the Cooler Master Hyper 212 uh, Evo CPU cooler, as well as the PNY XLR8 overclocked 1066 gig card. So right out of the gate we can see that the AMD system actually has quite the multi-threaded advantage and many of the tests where multiple threads are utilized heavily. Um, so this is because it has eight logical threads versus the Intel's uh, i3's four logical threads. However the i3, even in stock form, uh, at over a gigahertz lower clock speed, beats out the 8320 with single threaded performance. So I took all these performance numbers from all the benchmarks generated performance deltas and averaged them all out and found that the stock i3 was about 25% slower than the 8320 once it was overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. Uh, so once I overclocked the i3 to 4.4 gigahertz, this deficit decreased to about 15%. So comparing the i3 from its stock form to its overclocked form, it gained about 16% performance on average from a 19% increase in overall clock speed. Uh, however, what these benchmarks fail to show is that I suffered some instability in the system. Um, oddly enough, not during any kind of benchmarking or actual daily use, um, but just from idling. So every day or two at idle, it would randomly just have a blue screen crash and then lock the system before it would finish the dump and reboot. So while the system was stable during daily use, um, the strange idle uh, blue screens and system lockups were enough to push me off of the overclocked BIOS onto uh, the official factory BIOS for the motherboard. Whether this was just my own bad luck with silicon lottery or somehow Intel doing something with uh, Windows to detect that it was overclocked and shut it down uh, by causing these weird issues, uh, I can't say for sure. When we look at um, overclocking the Core i3, the upfront compromises are the loss of the use of the integrated GPU. Um, which most people won't care about, loss of C-states, which takes away your power saving features, and the loss of the ability to monitor CPU core temperatures. Um, there are other considerations to this as well, uh, considering Cabby Lake is just around the corner by the time I post this, so it may already be released, and there's going to be a, an, an officially overclockable i3 model in that new lineup. So as long as Intel keeps the pricing reasonable, this would be an officially supported option for budget overclocking ability that would probably take away any desire to do this i3 uh, overclocking with a Skylake chip. 
So most of these compromises are a non-issue for most. Um, anybody looking to overclock an i3, probably not using integrated graphics anyways, um, probably doesn't care about increased power consumption, and the CPU package temperature can at least be monitored uh, using HWinfo32. So in the end, no. I don't think that overclocking the Skylake i3 was worth it uh, because of these insta instability issues and the uncertain future of the ability to continue to use this overclock. Um, I think it's worth it just to go ahead and either hold out for Skylake or step up to an i5 chip that can overclock if that's what you want to do. So thanks for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed to the channel. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you guys have tried overclocking on uh, non k Skylake processors and what kind of experience you've had with it. Let me know if you think it was worth um, the hassle of doing it and if you had any better luck than I did uh, getting stable overclocks that didn't end with your system crashing on you randomly. All right, well, until next time, thanks for sticking around. See you in the next video, guys.